2 Timothy chapter 3, this know also that in the last days, perilous times, shootings in the mall, school, in churches, in synagogues, mosques, all over the country, perilous times shall come. For men shall be selfish. King James says, lovers of their own self. Covetous, lovers of money. Boasters, proud, arrogant, blasphemous. This was, this, this was the, the prophecy of all of these gossiping websites and on social media. Blasphemous, that is, slanderers. Slanderers. Y'all get off those slander sites. They wouldn't make any money if, if, you, if you'd get off of them. Amen. They're trying to build their numbers. Am I saying that right? Get, get their numbers up so they can charge for content. I got one of them that's constantly calling me, want, want to interview me. I'm not going to give him an interview. Praise the Lord. He's not gonna, I'm not going to give him that. I'm not going to help him. He's not going to get my audience. See, that, that's all that is. You're not that wonderful. They just want your audience. They want access to your numbers. They ain't that interested in you. And they're not going to change. Because if, if, if they wanted to change, they would just get delivered. Amen. Last time I read in the Bible, repentance is the key to getting right. Not doing an interview with somebody. Uh, they're covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemous, disobedience to, to parents, unthankful. That's that big spirit of entitlement that's in the world today. You all are letting people fool you, making you think that the government ought to pay for your college. I had a guy tell me that one time. I asked him, I said, why? Why should taxpayers pay for you to go to school? Why? He still haven't given me an answer. I've been waiting five years. Why? If that's something that you want, you work. Well, my parents uh, couldn't pay for it. Get a job. Work and go to school. Statistics show those who attend school and work do better when they get out of school in the workplace. Some of these trust fund babies, they don't do anything. Amen. They get in, they, they institution, uh, Adherence. They, get, they got in because their parents went in and they had it made. And there you go working two and three jobs and burning the midnight oil. But you're the one that employers are looking for when you graduate. Right. Amen. But uh, in this spirit, we're living in a world today uh, where people feel entitled to everything. It's hard to find people who are truly thankful. See, if a person got to twist your arm to get you to thank them, your thanks is not genuine. Right. Disobedient to parents, unthankful. I'm going I'm I'm to go fast. Unholy, secular, without natural affection. That explains how parents are forgetting and leaving their children in the cars in the summertime. Say what you will of me. I don't feel sorry for it. They show the parents crying. I just forgot that they, I, you forgot that your child. And then they started giving dummy instructions. So you need to do something to remind you that you got a child in the back seat. That's not natural. I tell you what. Forget and leave the dog in the back seat. Now, now they, don't, they don't forget the puppies because the dog is a member of the family. Without natural affection. 
When natural affection is not what it should be, this gives rise to incest. It gives rise to all kinds of things without natural affection. I could preach on that. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent people who lack self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Person who despises the goodness of good men. The goodness in others. We see it now all on the news and everything. See how Christians are despised now? We're called judgmental. These do-gooder Christians, and they think they're better than everyone else. And they're mad with you because you, being a woman, want to marry a man. And being a man, you want to marry a woman. And because you're saved and you don't smoke, amen, you don't drink, and they, they resent you because you don't go, want to go out to the club. Resent you because you, you believe in saving sex for marriage. The whole NFL turned on Tim Tebow. Because he wanted to save sex for marriage. Can you believe that? The world loves to get trophies. I told someone the other day, the world, both kingdoms, I got to move fast. I said I wasn't going to preach long. Both kingdoms collect trophies. The kingdom of God collects trophies. The kingdom of Satan collects trophies. Both kingdoms collect trophies. Read in the book of Acts and read where Paul on his missionary journeys, how he talked about when the chief priest came to Christ. How he talked about how they won the chief priest, the high priest, people like that. These were trophies because the chief priest, the high priest, the higher you were ranked in Judaism, the greater it was to win you to Christ because you were the leaders in the opposition of Christ. Yep. Wow. See, for the devil to get one of us, for the devil to bring us down, that's a trophy. Oh my, oh my, for the devil to topple NC third, to bring down the bishop, to bring down the chief of staff, to bring down the first assistant, these are trophies. Amen. And for us to win one of theirs, to win the drug dealer, to win the rap artist, to win the athlete, trophies. You ought to purpose in your heart that you will never be the devil's trophy. Praise the Lord that God has put you in such a place in life, have given you a name and given you a reputation and people know you for your association with Christ. You should never allow yourself to be the devil's trophy. Because I don't know how you untrophy once you become the devil's trophy. The Sanhedrin knew as time went on that they lost somebody when they lost Saul. And then when he became Paul, it took a minute, but the Christian community realized that somebody special was now on their side, on their side, because we got a real one. This guy who used to kill men who were in this way, now he preach this way. Trophies. Oh my, despisers of those, uh, them, those that are good. Traitors, heady, rash, reckless, high-minded, conceited, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Amen. They who put self, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God is simply those who put self interests and self desires uh, above God, in the place of God. So you're driven by your pleasures uh, than the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Ghost say don't do it, but your pleasures say I want it, you go with pleasure and not with the Holy Spirit. That's what it's talking about. Having a form of godliness, but denying the, the power thereof. Win these people to the Lord. Go out with them. Sit and talk. Talk it over. Talk at the table with them. Sit down and have a conference with them. No, Paul said, from such, turn away. Turn away. Turn away. Turn away. What does that mean? What do you think turn away means? 
Turn away means turn away. <laughs> I hate to give a definition by using the same word. Turn away, leave them alone. You're not going to be able to win them. Because whatever you tell them, they already know. I want to sit down and talk with Bishop. About what? You already know. He says from such, turn away. Is that heavy? This Bible is something else, isn't it? Um, and it's, verse 5, having a form of godliness, tells you that this particular text is not about worldly men. It's about religious leaders, people who claim to be a part of the body of Christ. For 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and down, behave, describes the behavior of last day churchmen. So this, 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 you can't even reach out and grab the Muslims and the Buddhists and the, all them. These are church people. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into the house and leave, creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sin and led away with divers lusts. See, the women were already laden with sins and already silly and already emotional and uh, burdened down before the false preacher got his hands on them. Ever learning, but never, never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Now, here's what I want to get to, the truth. The, never able to come into the knowledge of God's truth, the truth about Christ truth about the Bible. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate, worthless, as religious as they are. Some of them are district superintendents, some of them are bishops, some are supervisors, church mothers, first ladies, some are um, Missionaries, you name it. But they're reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their father shall be made manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Verse 8, now as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. I want to preach for a few minutes and uh, at the call meeting, I realize I'm talking to leaders. So this is a message um, to speak to the leadership. I want to talk to you about Janice and Jamborees. I guess I would name this message imitators. Imitators. Bless us, Lord, as we minister the word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's message, right quick, is designed as a word of encouragement to all administrative assistants, superintendents, pastors, elders, ministers, the supervisor, all missionaries, and all saints. All of you who are gathered here at this call meeting. And thank you for your response. Thank you for, for coming from far and near at the call of your leader. I'm Deeply touched and appreciative. Thank you for streaming today. Amen. Um, but this message is for you, and this message is about something that is being resisted and something that is under attack, and that is the truth of God. The truth of God, the truth about God, God's truth is being resisted. God's truth is being opposed. And we, my brothers and sisters, are guardians of that truth. Amen. It is our job to promote God's truth, Amen. to live God's truth, the truth of God and the truth about God. As I often say, the truth uh, about God deals with God's person, that God is holy, that he's a true and living God. He is, the, he is the original cause. He's the original 
and the sustaining cause that, that keeps in existence all that exists. He is the uncaused cause. Nobody made him. He needs nothing from humans. And uh, you know, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. That's how you know it can't be but one God. There's not room for two. If the one God takes up, every, if he's everywhere, he takes up all the space. So it can't be two. It's only one. And so uh, the truth uh, uh, of God, uh, about God, is his person. The truth of God is God's positions. What God says about marriage. What God says about family. What God says about the, cre the creation. What God says about the church. What God says about how we should raise our children. What God says about issues of uh, sexuality, biology, nationality, everything. What God says about politics. The Bible speaks to everything. The Bible speaks to everything. And we, we are called to take positions that agree with God. Amen. What God says about life. What God says about the sacredness of the womb. What God says, what God says about these things. What God says about who can be a husband and what a husband is. What God says about who can be a family. What God says about who can be a wife. Someone said the other day that a family, anything can be called a family. That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. See, once you start, once you start redefining or you're defining things to mean anything, then words mean nothing. And we're living in a day, those of us who are preachers, we're wordsmiths. And it's, it's, it's a challenge when you are a wordsmith and you're in a day where words means nothing. I said to you not long ago, the uh, position of first lady, that is a designated title. You're not implying that there's a second lady or a third lady or a fourth lady when you refer to your wife, if, if you're the leader of a church, as first lady. There's nothing wrong with being proper. Amen. My John Amanchuku, uh, he's a fine young man. He just stepped out. He's my son-in-law. He's not my son. Because right. if he was my son, then he'd be committing incest because he's married to my daughter. Right. 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 Titles mean things. Yeah. Words have meaning. Yeah. Don't be too quick to just throw things away. Yeah. You don't let emotion override intellect. Things mean things. Praise the Lord. You, you, you're, you're breaking barriers if you don't say things the way they ought to be said. I don't care if you don't say amen. Words have meaning. And uh, I, I'm, I'm always amazed at people who are in the business of words, who treat words like, 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 like words have no meanings and that titles can't be interchanged. Someone said to me after... Uh, he had a child born out of wedlock. says, I don't believe in this legitimate, illegitimate stuff. Well, if you don't believe in illegitimacy and legitimacy, and I was born out of wedlock. But if you don't believe in it, then you're also saying that you don't believe in marriage. That's right. For it is the institution of marriage that makes a child that is born legitimate. And if a child is born outside the institution of marriage, I didn't say he couldn't be saved. I'm saved. I didn't say he couldn't be a bishop. I'm one. But I was still born illegitimately. So you don't change the meaning of things. Because once you do that, you know what you begin to do? You begin to lower the bar. Words and things contribute to the foundations of society. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Foundations have to be upheld. Saints have to be leaders in upholding these foundations. I was talking to someone not long ago, and they said they hate all police officers. I said, oh, you got to change from that because we can't have a society without them. They don't call them peace officers for nothing. Yes, they are rogue cops, but they're also rogue preachers. But we still need preachers. Praise the Lord. And if we do away with them, the happiest people in the world are going to be the criminals. They can't wait. That's right. Get rid of the police. The criminals can't wait. And as soon as they're gone, guess what? You're going to have company every evening.
We've redefined marriage. We've redefined church. We are redefined. There's too much redefining. Our nomenclature has changed so that saints no longer talk like saints. The, you, you, the, the lady told Peter, I could tell you were one of his followers. I could tell by your speech. When was the last time somebody could tell that you followed Jesus by your speech? Does your speech give you away? There is a point counterpoint movement going on in the world where norms are being challenged. Landmarks are being removed. Institutions are being redefined. Standards are lowered, are being lowered. And in many cases, standards are being done away with altogether. Churches used to be slick with this. They're, they're not slick anymore. They used to, they used to be that uh, come as you are was code for stay, stay as you are. Now they'll just tell you. You don't have to change to come here. We don't bother that stuff. I, I just come to encourage you. I just come to say things to encourage you. I, I, I didn't come to preach standards. That's what they will say now. That is, standards have done away with. The spirit of Janice and Jambres is alive and well. Before I preach about uh, the truth, let's talk a little about the imitators who try to duplicate the work of the Lord for the express purposes of subverting it. Did you see what happened the other day in, in uh, Virginia? Uh, the artist Pharrell has a big, he sponsors a big gospel explosion. What? Now all the church folk and the singers who participated are people who have no discernment. You know what amazes me? I'm, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I'm amazed at the, the, the sheer lack of discernment. All of this prayer, all these prayer calls we own, all of this sanctimonial talk, but you can't discern the simplest of things. Just, mother, I'm telling you, mother, that, you know, I'm amazed. And maybe, 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 uh, maybe some of us have giftings that we don't realize we have. But I, I believe that some things it, that Stevie Wonder uh, could see. Ray Charles uh, uh, can, can see. So this man throws this big uh, gospel explosion, and you know the gospel community is always glad to participate with any and everything free. See, if someone else is paying for it, and if, and if you're able to be around the famous in the world, I don't know why Pharrell would, why you would even want to be around him. I don't know why you would want his autograph. I don't know why you would be enamored to be in his presence. I don't know why, if you found yourself on the same elevator together, that you would even mention it. I don't know why. He hasn't done anything for Christ. Praise the Lord. Well, he made that song happy. Well, I, David wrote happy long before that. He said, happy is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Stand if not in the way of sinners, sit if not in the seat of the scornful. David said a long time ago. Well, he wasn't saying anything. It's been in the Bible. Say amen. If you have to slip out, you need to stay for this message, but leave your offering. <laughs> Say amen. Yeah, because you need to hear this. Because I'm telling you something. Man throws on a big explosion. Everybody responds. And then the next thing you know, he posts pictures of himself dressed like a woman. He claims now that he's going to redefine masculinity. I'm amazed at his arrogance. You mean to tell me that just because you can sing a song, you think you have that kind of pull? What's sad is with some... He does. We do. But you, let me tell you, we've got to be careful that we don't watch this stuff because these people are trying to wonder. They're trying to work their way in for the purpose of subversion. 
They're trying to undermine. They're trying to overthrow. They're trying to corrupt. They're trying to destroy the church. And I want to know where is some of your, you, your where is your convictions? I told someone the other day, convictions never show up at times of convenience. And the world is always trying to get in. To work its way into the church. Praise the Lord. So that it can stop the work of God. Kill our reputation. Soil us. Make us just like them. The power of the church world lies in its ability to be separate. It is not in its ability to blend in. The power of the church is its ability to give the world an alternative. In 19, I think it was 96. I think it was 96. Don't quote me on that. Rupert Murdoch noticed that most media stations were slanted a certain way. And he said that is a market out there that's not being catered to. And he started the Fox News Channel, which had a slant in the opposite direction. And now he's got more viewers than the others combined. Now, if, uh, CNN's badly got enough people to keep it going. If, if they stay uh, in the role, bad, fair and balanced, if they continue in the mission, if they remain a conservative station, they'll keep their audience because now they're as an alternative. There's an alternative. But if they become CNN, if they become MSNBC, they lose their audience because now everybody's the same. When the church, which used to offer an alternative, when the church becomes the world, then there's no reason for the world to come to church because there's no alternative. Why would I go and hear the preacher who sounds like a secular psychologist? Or a psychiatrist. If I want psychiatry, I go to the psychiatrist. But if I want preaching, I'm going to church. But if I get to church and the preacher sounds like a psychiatrist, now I got to find somewhere else to go. Because I thought I was going to get some preaching. I thought I was going to get to hear something about Jesus, only to find out that they don't talk about Jesus anymore. Satan is an imitator. I'm almost done. What, do, what God does, Satan counterfeits. The religious leaders in the last days, as I just read to you in verse 1 through 7, these wicked folk, praise the Lord, will have, the, the, the true saints will have to contend with a counterfeit Christianity. Their purpose is to promote a lie and to resist the truth of God's word. They deny the authority of the Bible. Have you noticed more and more, fewer and fewer preachers are preaching Bible. More and more, fewer and fewer preachers are preaching book, chapter, and verse. I'm so sick and tired of anecdotal stories. I'm tired of hearing people quote everybody but Jesus. It's as though you are a primitive preacher. You don't show yourself to be learned if you quote from Genesis to Revelation, you impress people with your ability to bring up Aristotle, Socrates, and many now quote from other religious doctrines. That's, that's the work of the devil. People now are substituting biblical authority with human wisdom and human philosophies. And in their attempt to be modern, they deny the reality of sin. And people's need for salvation. Praise the Lord. Let me just tell you this. 
the word or the name Janus of our text. Janus literally means he who seduces. Jambres, he who makes rebellion. These may have been symbolic names given to these men years later since they are not mentioned in the Exodus and they're not mentioned anywhere in the Old Testament. If you read the Old Testament from, from Genesis to Malachi, you won't find uh, Janus, nor will you find Jambres. They were said to be among the musicians of Pharaoh's court. They imitated Moses' miracles. Read about it in Exodus chapter 7 and down. When Moses' uh, rod was made into a snake, they turned theirs into a snake. Many of the things that Moses did, they imitated it up to a point. A point. These were the magicians of Pharaoh. They were seducers and they were rebellious men. Can I get a witness? Also, according to Jewish tradition, you can read, according to Jewish, Jewish tradition, they led in the making and the worshiping of the golden calf. They got with Aaron when Moses was on Mount Sinai getting the word from the Lord. They got with the assistant. That's why your assistants have to be strong people. Now look, those of you who are in positions of authority, you've got to have the courage of your conviction. You've got to be people of principle and people of conviction because there will always be a Janice and a Jamborees who will try to move you off your point, try to get you to see it from a different angle. This is the work of the devil. While Moses was gone, these men got with the crowd and began to talk to Aaron and say, we don't know where Moses is. Moses has been gone too long. We need a God. Oh, we need somebody to help us. And they broke Aaron's resolve. They broke his spirit. God give me strength not to lose my resolve. I've prayed this prayer. I find myself praying it more and more. God give me strength. Because as we near the coming of the Lord, you get fewer and fewer people to encourage you to stand your ground. One time the whole church of God in Christ was a stand your ground church. Now very few of us are standing our ground. We're silent when, the, when they bring in the fraternities. Silent as they bring in sororities. Silent as the masons creep in. Silent as the sissies sing on the choir. Oh Lord, silent. Hallelujah, as the preachers become money grabbers. Oh, Lord, silent. Silent while our babies are being aborted. And we're bringing in politicians who will stand up in a sanctified church and say, I support a woman's right to choose. How are you going to be sanctified and support the slaughter of the unborn? I'm going down to Goldsboro in a few days. I'm already lining up. The brethren have already told me. They said, preacher, we're going to be there with you. I don't want no wish-washing men to accompany me because I'm going down to Goldsboro. I'm going down to Barber territory. I'm going down there where they don't like this kind of preaching. Ooh, Lord, I'm going to preach hard down there. I'm not going to preach a message that has nothing to do with our differences. I'm not going to go down there and try to preach them happy. I'm going down there full of the Holy Ghost and I'm going to stand up and declare for God I live and for God I'll die. Oh, oh, we need somebody. We need people who have that conviction, who won't change. Janice and Jamborees talk uh, Aaron into making a golden calf. Read it in Exodus uh, chapter 32. But in that same 32nd chapter, you see where Janice and Jamborees, uh, without being named, they were slaughtered by the Levites. Because I heard Moses 
when he said, who's on the Lord's side? Thank you, Jesus. They were slaughtered, but that spirit of seduction and that spirit of rebellion, it did not die. It lives on today. Hallelujah. As it was in Moses' day, back in when God brought them out of Egypt, as it was in Paul's day, with these men in Ephesus. Well, here we are today, living in the last days, and we're still dealing with this same spirit. Hallelujah. We're dealing with the spirit. In verse two, it said that men would be unholy as a spirit of modernization, of secularization. We're trying to secularize too much but I hear the Lord saying let us all go back to the old landmark let us all go back to the old time way singing shouting let us all go back to serving God like we used to remember in my clothes that Janice and Jamborees, their spirit is trying to infiltrate for the exact purpose of, of daunting, of stopping, of undoing the move of God. They want to work their way in and rob us of our authority to cry loud and spare not. They want us to take down a little bit by a little bit. Give in to this one, give in to that one. To, to the point you won't be able to make a stand. But leaders, I stop by to tell you that God put MC3 together for us to stand on the word of God. The Lord healed our bodies so we could stand on the word of God. The Lord, ah, the Lord has blessed our church so we can stand on the word of God and tell the world that the Bible is still right. The Bible is God's word that holiness, ah, is right yeah yeah let me hear you praise the Lord let me hear you give God praise Woo! praise him in here praise him praise him praise him going to my seat but you ought to grab somebody by the hand and say oh neighbor ah, I won't go back I won't go back I won't take down I won't give in I'm gonna stand 